didn't come to mind. Eh? Like snow and cold weather. Eh? I guess that's obvious. Eh? So then, why did it take until this year for the Olympic Committee to choose Canada as a host country? Eh? I mean, it's about time. Eh? That we start paying attention to our north-of-the-border neighbor. Eh? Hopefully by now, the bright lights of Olympic coverage will have melted some of the misguided notions that we Americans have concerning this country of just over 25 million. Oh, Canada, eh? Isn't that the land where bearded woodsmen trudge through the snow to play hockey at night? And aren't those Mounties something? And those children with their rosy cheeks? Yeah, good people, eh? <laughs> people who wear lots of hats, we think. Fur hats, knit hats. Only they don't call them knit hats. Oh, that's a toque. That's a handmade one, this one. And that's Brian Mulrooney, prime minister of a country made up of ten provinces and two territories. I know that for rather basic civics lessons, but we have to start with basics considering some of the questions that American visitors ask before coming up to these Olympic Games. Someone phoned and asked if we had bathrooms in the hotel, if our rooms came with bathrooms. I think Canadians are always very sensitive on this subject, and we always feel that we know a lot about the United States and that Americans do not know much, a great deal about us. Blame it on a variety of factors, from cartoons like Dudley Do-Right... You sent for me, sir? ...to Mark Twain, who allegedly said... The Canadian weather was, uh, was ten months of winter and two months of poor sledding. Which, of course, would mean a lot of ice time for hockey players, big and small. If you don't, don't uh, grow up to be a hockey player, then your son, if you want your son to play as a hockey player. Yes, listening to this song, one would have to admit that the nippy weather actually does affect the Canadian psyche. After all, the title of Quebec's unofficial anthem is My Country is Not a Country. It's winter. Winter is cold, but nice. Notice the accent. Hey. Eh? It's all due to the fact that the French were willing to surrender a country, but not their heritage, when the English defeated them on Quebec's Plains of Abraham back in 1759. Bienvenue au Canada. In Canada, regional differences remain quite striking, from the old cities to the new, from the narrow streets to the wide open spaces. You are dealing with an enormous country. <laughs> you really have to grasp that. The second largest land area in the world, populated mostly along its southern border by a people not afraid to poke fun at their conservative nature. Take the Canadian Football League, for instance. There are only eight teams, but two of them have the same nickname, Rough Riders. Obviously, one team had the name Rough Riders first, and the other city, when they were naming their team, said, uh, oh, let's see, should we come up with something? Oh, no, I don't know whether we should take a chance. Let's call them Rough Riders, too. <laughs> and then there's Second City TV's infamous Mackenzie Brothers. Well, maybe I had too many beers before the show. Yeah, eh? like maybe 36 is a lot, eh? Well, okay, not where I come from, huh? You know, oh, I've met characters like that up here, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, we, we do exist. <laughs> and so, believe it or not, does summer. Imagine that. The ice does melt. Just as the cities are clean, the transportation reliable, and the scenery breathtaking. As for the people, they're friendly and, above all, forgiving. Welcome to Canada, eh? <laughs> for the past three weeks, they've opened their arms wide to welcome their nearsighted neighbors from the south. And for that, we owe them this heartfelt farewell. Goodbye, Canada. Uh, sir, is that saying it the Canadian way? Sorry, let's do that again. Goodbye, Canada. Eh? <laughs> For today, Mike Leonard, NBC News, Calgary, Alberta, 